Hey guys, EBP Man here, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at 3D printing technology. But 3D printing technology that allows you to not only print something that looks like this, but something like this. We're talking about the world's first 3D printer that can print rubber. Let's go to check it out. Now today's video is a first impression of the potential of this printer. I've had this printer now for two weeks and I've had now, this is my second firmware upgrade, uh, testing out the printing capabilities across a variety of materials. Uh, traditional materials like PLA, PTG, as well as TPU, as well as this new rubber technology. Now, this product is gonna be available in the market in the next several weeks. And this is gonna give you a sense of what you can expect from this technology. So we'll take a look at what it looks like, some of the features that it has. We'll take a look at some of the prints and what my experience has been with these prints. And then we'll also talk about some things that you should do if you pick up this printer to get the best printing experience. So let's get right to it. Now in today's video, we're taking a look at the Atom Stack Cambrian Pro, which is the version that I have in my home that I've been testing. But they also have a Cambrian Max. Uh, for those of you who are curious about the dimensions and the build plate, you're looking at from the Cambrian Pro having a 250 by 235 by 235 build plate. So it's a relatively decent sized build plate. Now if you really want to go large, and I'm talking about like if you want to print like cosplay type masks and let's say cowls, large items, uh, very large items, you're looking at the Cambrian Max, which has a build dimension of 380 by 330 by 320 millimeters. Now, the print heads for both of these solutions are going to be the same. You're going to have a 1.75 and a 2.85. The 2.85 is going to be used for the rubber uh, material. The 1.75 is going to be for all the standard material that we have today on the market. Now, in addition to printing out the rubber material with the 2.85 print head, the 1.75 is really going to give you the flexibility to print today's common material. So if you think about PLA, PETG, those type of um, filaments, you'll be able to print them with that print head. Now, the printer does have a glass bed, which makes it really easy to remove prints once you print. And also, it does really well when it comes to print adhesion. Uh, it does not have auto leveling, though. So you don't have an auto leveling mechanism. You have to do manual leveling. But if you have manual leveled in the past, any kind of 3D printer, you'll be able to do this one as well. Now, as soon as you get this printer, you'll want to adjust some key areas with the included wrench. Uh, the back, for example, you want to adjust these two points because it's going to improve the overall print head as it goes up and goes down. The other thing that you might experience is that the print bed itself may be a little bit wobbly during shipping. And if you do have some wobble, you'll want to make sure that you adjust the two points that I'm illustrating here uh, with an included wrench. You just tighten them up enough so that it doesn't wobble. Do not over tighten them because then it will impede the bed from moving forward and back just enough so that it doesn't wobble anymore. Now, one of the things that really stood out about this printer to me was the overall construction. So it's an all metal construction, very, very sturdy. And as you can see in the back here, it has a nice braided cable going from the print bed all the way down to the main base, which is something that uh, you wanna see in a lot of printers, but I frankly have not. So it does not kink. Uh, you don't have to have any worries about it bending and maybe even fraying or breaking off. I really like the construction and also the easy access to the uh, power area here in the back. Now, the other thing about this printer is that this thing is super quiet. I literally have it printing during my test in my kitchen. And you can see, this thing is super quiet. We're talking about uh, my wife and I can have a conversation, the thing is printing, and it makes no real noise that disrupts our conversation. Now, access to all of the printer controls is on the right side via a little touchscreen. Now, the screen does have an SD card. That SD card or micro SD card slot is only used for firmware upgrades. There's another SD slot that you'll use to uh, load your prints. Now, in order to have a great print experience, it's important that your build plate stay consistently warm in all areas. And as you can see through this shot, this thermal view, the heat bed is doing really, really well. There's some variations, slight variations, but not significant. And that is due to the actual movement of the print head going over it, the fan of the print head also um, being on and cooling as it's printing. But overall, it performed really well. Now, as you saw, the actual filament itself gets mounted on the upper left-hand corner of the printer. Uh, this is a PLA Plus, just to give you a sense of the difference in filament. And again, this is a hard plastic material, gets heated up. Uh, and the heating temperature is anywhere from 205 to 225, and then it starts to lay prints, right? A little bit harder material, not flexible at all. Now over here, we have the rubberized one. I just wanted to show you what this looks like. So here we have our rubberized material. Uh, here you can see that the operating temperature for this one is 200 to 220, right? Uh, but the thickness is a little bit different. The PLA was 1.75, this is 2.85. And notice, uh, this is pretty thick. See, notice the material right here, what this looks like. And while it's still in the real form, it does have some flexibility, right? So you can see how flexible this is. 
Now, a little bit thicker, obviously, uh, because of the dimensions. And let me show you what a print would look like. Now, I'm gonna show you kind of like the overall journey that I went through, uh, because again, I've been testing this out and this is, again, my first experience with it. So this was the first cube I printed out of it and this is a calibration cube. They didn't look well at all, right? So you can see this, it looks like Swiss cheese. I was like, this does not look good. Uh, but then, uh, after some calibration, uh, this is what I was able to get. So let's look at the Y side. So we can look at the difference right here. This is the difference between one and the other. Big, big, big difference, just with some slight calibration. I'm using Cura 4.8, and I don't really have any real profile. So you know how when you go into Cura and you're able to choose your printer type and you're able to choose the actual uh, profile, the type of printer? That doesn't exist yet for this printer, so I'm actually tweaking the settings. By the time you get the printer, I'm sure there's gonna be a profile that you'll be able to choose and you'll be set to go. But you can see, uh, first try, and then this is what it looks like now. Uh, this is, again, really, really flexible, right? So this is uh, rubberized. Um, you can see the, the flexibility that you have. The next thing I printed um, was the tire, right? So here's my tire. And tire, again, flexible. <laughs> so um, I don't know what I would print if I would print out a tire like this, but you can print a tire. I actually want to do uh, some cosplay masks. I can think about, you know, some of the masks that I have right now are very, uh, they're FDM based, so they're hard. Uh, and something like this, imagine like an Incredibles mask going on and having this rubberized material and how flexible that's gonna be on your face. It's just gonna be awesome for hopefully this next Halloween. Uh, so again, flexible tires. This print is not 100% successful and it's not 100% successful because I did notice that there, um, there's some dimpling, right, that's, that's going on. There's some blobs around the sides here that I was noticing, uh, but again, this is, uh, this is not a production version. This is a pre-production version. But again, you can see the awesome, awesome potential in this printer. Now, the next thing I wanted to do is actually test out printing traditional material. And there's actually two print heads, right? So this is the PLA print head, and you can see how it says PLA 2.0, 1.75 millimeters. And this is uh, basically what you do in order to be able to switch from print head to print head or material to material, specifically going from the rubber material over to, you know, traditional material, which is 1.75. And remember, 1.75 is gonna cover a whole host of material. So you're looking at PETG, you're looking at ABS, you're talking TPU, you're also looking at uh, PLA. So this one covers a wide gamut of printing options. And this, this head, again, is what I use to print this bust that you see here. And look at all the overall quality. The bust came out really, really nice. And I'll tell you that my experience was just like before, I did have some, some bust that failed. I had some really cheesy uh, looking prints, but after so, a firmware upgrade and also some additional tweaking, uh, this is the overall quality. So look at this, again, calibration cube. Look how clean that is. And I would still say that it has some way to go, right? So this isn't in any way, I would say final, final. But again, what we're seeing here is the overall potential of this printer as it's being improved and getting ready for all of you that are gonna participate in the Kickstarter. Uh, so far, I think the progress is great. Now, one tip I wanted to give you about switching print heads on this printer is that the print head is, is switched by just releasing three screws that are in the back of the printer and the print head comes out. But you also have to plug in the ribbon here on the side. Now, what I found very easy is to connect the ribbon prior to mounting the print head on the printer. So what I do is when I remove the print head, what I then do is I put the ribbon in and then after I connect the ribbon and it's secure so I don't bend it, I then connect it to the actual uh, printer itself. So if you do start switching print heads, uh, make sure that you first, in my opinion, and you can try this, connect it first here so that you have more flexibility than mount it on the uh, printer itself. So guys, that wraps up our first impression review of the Atomstack Cambrian Printer Pro. Uh, a printer that can print something like this, rubber, or something like this, PLA. See you in the next one.